Hello everyone, welcome to the Museum of Monterey. Our panel today, the question, why art matters. I'm Mark Baer, I'm former executive director at the Museum of Monterey, I was artist in residence, and I'm a video artist. With me is Jose Ortiz, uh, a muralist, Salvador Munoz, a historian and art advocate, and Paulette Lynch from the Arts Council of Monterey County. Why does art matter? And art matters to everyone for a different reason. If you're uh, collecting Jeff Koontz and high-end art, art matters because your money's all in the bank and that's a pretty good place to put your money. If uh, you have to have a, something that matches the sofa, that's a pretty good reason for art to matter. But for um, each one of us, art matters for a very different reason. Um, for me, Art is a uh, way to find out what I'm thinking. It's, 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 a, it's a path inward. Uh, the idea for me is to find out where the I and the we meet. Why art matters. Um, it matters because um, it's, it's, it's within us and it's around us. It's, it's, it's everywhere. And I, 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 I've uh, grown up with the idea that uh, that everything is an art form, and whatever skill you have, whatever you do, whatever you wear, whatever car you drive, whatever house you live in, it's full of that uh, thought of creative process, and it's done by someone or something, or you know, they that's was created that would, it was not there, but now it's there, and uh, so why wouldn't uh, art matter? Why wouldn't it matter? Yes. <laughs> Yes, it matters that we have, uh, the art is an expression of the soul and, ref and therefore is a refuge of that soul. It's eternalizing a moment, a feeling, a passion for what you believe. Like in Salinas, it's very unique. We have a valley uh, where when I see a piece of art, especially when Jose does a mural and shows the valley, the first thing that comes to mind is in the Valley of Dreams, there is a rock crop of fertile minds, creative minds. There is so many people bending their backs, earning their, their, uh, their work for living. For us, um, they are creative people there. Uh, they, they are craftsmen. And they are tr working so hard to express themselves just to have some food on their table for us to enjoy that bounty. But then we see Los Hijos del Sol by Jose Ortiz. He's uh, harvesting those mines that we see on those rock crops. And they're expressing their minds, expressing their feelings, especially the mothers that we see on the exhibit in this museum at this moment. For me, the arts are the answer. And it's a hard one realization in some ways. I have um, the pleasure of being the executive director of the Arts Council for Monterey County. And when I was first in the job in 2004, that was a pretty sketchy place to be because it was a time when why do the arts matter really was an existential question for, for groups like ours. It was a time when there was no public funds available or fewer and fewer, where private philanthropy was also thinking about, well, shouldn't we be doing something else? Aren't there higher priorities? And in education, it was the worst of all where it should be the most easily available. And so I had both the, um, the task, the daunting task at first, but the exquisite pleasure as time went on to, to really work through all the examples I could possibly find to convince people that the arts did matter. Not only did they matter, but the arts were everything. The arts are a catalyst for people to uh, connect. I love what Mark said about where the I and the we connect. Mm -hmm. People need that more and more and more. 
Um, and it's ironic that in our, our society where things are so readily available at the press of a button, um, you can actually, through uh, an app, I'll just tell you, called Periscope, see what people are doing all around the world right now. Still, we need to connect, and there's no more powerful way than through the arts. Still, children need to have experiences in the arts to have deeper learning, to have a time to focus, to develop mastery, to develop their own ideas, and that is becoming more and more important as we tackle our big problems, as employers look for people who aren't just going to copy something, write it down, do what I tell you, but rather generate their own ideas. How can they do that without any practice, without any immersion in the arts? They really can't. By the arts, I also mean very broadly defined to include certainly music and uh, dance and drama and, and many other ways of, of, of creativity and expression and connecting. And the, the one thing I'll, I'll conclude with is um, neuroscientists are behind me now. Uh, this wasn't true in 2004 that things were just beginning. But if you notice in the, in like starting around 2011, there was an explosion of, of research that's being published very broadly um, that, that tells how the arts are, are working and how the arts are the answer and how it, they help us make our brains work better. If you, if you want to know what part of the brain is affected when people are playing music, what, what's the part that lights up when, when people are doing their brain mapping? The real answer that scientists were shocked themselves to learn is it's the whole brain that lights up. And that's no surprise to me. <laughs> So one of the things that Jose and I discussed before this was, you know, what are we, again, what are we trying to do? And one of the things that we have in common with what we do is to tell younger people who feel the impulse to create. Not everybody is an artist. Everybody can make art, but not everybody has a calling. Uh, to, to, to make art is a calling. And, but it is a calling that people have a lot of, um, reticence, fear, doubt, um, just uh, all, all kinds of barriers to make the leap to create. And uh, I think it's so important uh, that one shows the way that, and, and, and again, this is a great example of what's going on in our courtyard right now and, and what's going on upstairs with, with uh, these, these kids' paintings. Uh, to bridge that, to, to, to help make that leap, to give support to that leap, and let them know you, you don't have to have great facility, you don't have to have um, great technique, you have to have a passion and a desire, and uh, you have to um, just feel that it's something you have to do. And if it is something you have to do, then we, we want to push. And I, I know that's how, how you felt. Yes. I know, I've, um, gr growing up in, uh, as a child, I, I, I usually noticed my hands and how, we can, how I can actually create something out of just mud or, or a pile of wood, just of something. And uh, when I was introduced with pen to pencil uh, and paper, I, I began doing other things. And it just kept me going. Uh, I, I would see a chair and I'd probably duplicate the chair or a house or just the fields. When I was, when I was able to create three-dimensional figures like little you know, farm animals, I, I, I thought it was fantastic. So what I think, I, I, it was just that process that allowed me to see what I, my possibility, my, my skill. I, as an illustrator or as an observer, and my hands, how, how my hands can actually help me to create something. So at this point of life, I, I, I bring in that idea to children that you can actually create your own clothing. You can design, you can create anything that you set your mind to. That's a world, because a building, you know, as an architect, mm -hmm you know that you can make a house out of so much material, but you gotta design it, you have, there's a process. And it's empowering. Yeah, it's, it's, so, it's empowering. It's, so it's empowering to them. And, and all technology right now, I think, 
it's all imagery and, and it's all little designs that can tell you how to use the imagery and I, every, well, I, I see it that it's everywhere, it's around us and uh, I, think, I think that we, if we install that on children then I think they're um, out to a good start. I'll let it go ahead. At any time in history, we always, whatever is left of any civilization, it is architecture and the arts that is a remnant. And we go back and, and always, it give, it's a, like a snapshot of that particular moment that we have eternalized with the art and architecture. Art to me in architecture is a living sculpture because it's a beautiful sculpture of materials and we live within it. And a lot of the time it becomes a symbol. And that symbol could be like the Eiffel Tower as an example, or even the, uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the Golden Gate uh, Bridge. Yeah. We see those and we are amazed of how can people perceive those forms and, and, and the creativities of, create, uh, of having the, the, uh, uh, the engineering to calculate the minimum amount of materials for the maximum use of space. Mm -hmm. And that's what it stays in, in every epoch in our lives, in our civilization. Yes. For me, one of the things that I really notice, I know some people say everybody is an artist and some people mm -hmm. say, well, people who really develop mastery and some even will say, well, it's the people who get paid. They're, they're the mm -hmm. artists, right? Somebody decided they were. But to I me, one of the things, that, things that, that I think that's so, so uh, fascinating, fascinating is, is that, that people, people who are really engaged in the arts in a, in a really consistent fashion and, and really are creating their own work, they're, they're the, the ones who have figured it out. We don't have to be so afraid. And I think the artists who, who come and they show their work, they help me to be less afraid every day because they've been willing to not just do a little something, but to, but to decide what they're going to do and explore. And it's in that exploring and the experimenting and trying again um, that so many magical things can happen. But first, I, you know, I, I think of myself, I, I, I'm too afraid to dance. You know, isn't that sad? I, I, just, I just can't get out there. Uh, so I'm less afraid in other arenas. But I watch dancers, and maybe one day I'll, I'll learn to be less afraid. And I just have to watch them more, I think. So this, this process that, that you can see them go through, it's, it's there. that process is there for all of us to see whatever particular discipline calls to us, whether it's poetry or music or dance or, or drama or something, it's the exploration process that happens that is so critical to our lives and may yet be the answer for all kinds of challenges that we all face as a culture and uh, as, as a community. So that's what I'm, I'm very grateful for to every artist I look um, the Arts Council does a number of exhibitions throughout the year, and one of my favorite things to do is to, is to walk around and, and look at everything, and then to, to read the artist's bio. And there's not a moment that goes by that they're not explaining some sort of process. First, they were doing something, but then there is some insight that they had, and now they do something a little differently. And that teaches me yet again that it's okay to experiment, it's good to explore, and the making that connection, taking that stand is, at the end is so worthwhile, and it's a continual process. When we, uh, Jose was talking about working with young people, when we had a, a, a really great program with kids who had been suspended, like from every school or whatnot, they're in an alternative setting, um, and we asked them, what did the art program mean to them? There was one girl at the back of the room who said, you learn just because you made a mistake doesn't mean you throw it all away. And that's really stayed with me, and, and I'm really grateful to everyone for that. So the, the next, uh, why art matters, one of the reasons art matters which is as old as time, is the story of ourselves and the story of the tribe. 
And I imagine, you know, again, talking to this, this person who wants to make the leap, imagine that you've got the cave wall, you've got three pieces of chalk, and you have to tell the story. And that means that you have to invent the language, you have to do the thing, and you have to do this. And that is, is a very deep impulse. And that, so, and again, we tell the story in song, we tell the story in dance, we tell the story in music, we tell the story in architecture. And, and, and I believe even in, in technology, we tell this story. Uh, but the, the, that telling of the story, it's a, a, a sacred responsibility. And there's, art matters because it is a, a sacred form, or part of it can be a sacred form. And so that's having that record and having that record accurately and having that and, and showing the world in always new ways and always new light um, and showing the new, uh, showing the future, showing imagination. That's why art matters. Yeah, um, I, I see a, a, another, I came to my mind, it's, 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 you know, the process you were talking about, the process of creating something I mean, there's a difference when you, when you buy something already made. So there's not a lot of uh, understanding of, of the process or the values. You know, it's like the cook that can buy a pizza or you can cook it on your own. So uh, the process has taught me to value and to understand uh, my, my, uh, my elements and, and how important they are and how significant everything is. So, how then the tomato be significant to a pizza or, or to a sandwich, and, and how do you get the, the tomato? Who, how ripe it is, and how and you look at the shape and the smell, and you begin to, using your senses. And what I when I bring these um, elements to the children, there uh, you can have children going back and forth. You know, they're really you know the children. They have a lot of energy. But after a while, they they start observing the the elements. You know, they start seeing the tree and going to the tree and touching the tree when they're drawing it, when they're painting it. They want to find out about the textures, the the colors, and they even notice little little you know insects crawling up. So it's all these things. Like they, they were painting the mom, and, and um, I noticed that they began to to notice their mothers a little bit more. And um, how they had a little wrinkle here, or how they had a little dot. <laughs> so, but then caressing her and loving her a little bit more, noticing their hands. So it's it's a process that creates values, and I think that's why art matters. So art is a way to see. Yes. It's it's a way to have Feel. a value. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's it's a way to connect to life. And it's a way to observe life. Yes. So and, on you. and also expressing their feelings yes. you know, in yes. a time, in a place. And it's a way to get out of a reality and having to another level. It's always so, it's so, it's a, a, a creativity is addictive. The more you get into it, you get deeper and higher. Not only deeper, but higher. And you explore the other you. We all were born with, with talents, but we need somebody yeah. who takes it by the hand and to discover that particular talent so we can you massage it, polish it. Like I see with the Hijos del Sol, how he takes the kids that a lot of them in a virtual getting into a gang, and then Jose says, open your eyes. Put your energy to something creative, something positive. Find yourself. Express yourself. Put your energy in something positive so you can, somebody can remember you forever. Because when you make a mistake, they will forget you. And art persists and is forever. That energy is also so interesting to me because one of the things that we notice with um, older people too is that they can start to lose heart. To their, mm -hmm. There's a lot of challenges that they face and, and can feel like, well, you know, what use am I now? You know, maybe they're really super productive at some point. But um, we had an artist go into, into a place where there are a lot of people who said, no, I, I, can't, I can't do anything. I, I'm really, I'm past that point now. I can't. 
So I asked her to persist. This was a project for first night for the millennium. And she said, okay, okay. I said, just hang in there. Just see what happens. Just hang in there. So she asked each one of them, well, can you just take your thumb and, and put it in this, this paint and just put your thumbprint there? Well, days went by, weeks went by, and before you knew it, uh, all the people who were there who had said, no, 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 I, I can't, I, I, no, it's not for me anymore, um, ended up going all around the county with her to show off the great Millennium clock sculpture that they had made together, and it was completely <laughs> decorated. So, so the arts really, they, they matter because we tap into uh, something that's really, really powerful. It helps um, injured vets, uh, people with brain injuries, overcome their, their brain injuries or, or get, get through it. It helps us overcome deep, terrible pain of very many sorts, that, that energy, the focus, the drive. It all comes back when we start to, to um, both loosen up and focus on, on something else. That creative spirit, that, that energy um, gives us each, no matter how we're engaged or how we're expressing it in that moment, it gives us something that's more powerful than our pain. And that is really good for everybody and at every stage of their lives and wherever that pain is coming from. Um, so that's why art matters to me. Okay. Art matters because it's fun. <laughs> and imagination is fun. And imagination is fun because if you create art, if you're involved in art, you are always surprised and you're always surprised what's in you. You're sometimes horrified, frightened, <laughs> what, whatever, but you're always surprised that there's this other voice that talks or this voice that talks or that you, this thought came in and it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, um, it's, it's just magic. You know what we haven't talked about yet mm -hmm. that, that really um, is, is so critical is empathy. Yes. And you're just getting to that, yeah. I yes. think, yes. that voices, hearing different voices. There was um, a supervisor who uh, said one time in, in a forum, you know, like this, why does it matter? Um, and he said that he had been a very angry um, vet coming back from Vietnam. Somebody dragged him into an art class and made him play the role of a landowner. And he said, no, 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 I, I, I can't do that, I can't do that. But once he did it, once he found himself in somebody else's shoes, uh, he realized that he had the power to do that, to understand somebody else's perspective, and from that point he really found his life's calling. And that, that ability to see things from other people's perspective, or, or even the natural world's perspective, or, or some other cultures, or different ages and stages of, of history, to be able to do that, to empathize, uh, is also something that we've been really lacking for a while. <laughs> so so reintegrating the arts into our schools, reintegrating the arts into the very fundamental part of our everyday life is also critical for, for developing our capacity to, to understand and love each other better. I also want to say, what do we do with all the information? We are bombarded. We are overwhelmed. We live in a very strange universe of competing agendas. Uh, it, you can't react to everything and, and it's going on 24 hours a day and how do you how do you deal with this world? And you've got to process and make, you know, it, it, art is one of the best ways to process and find out how it processes with you and to give it shape even if you you know again when you make art you seldom understand what you're doing in fact if you're doing good art you have no idea what you're doing you're you're just um you're just reacting but it's really important to uh or you're i guess not reacting you're filtering you're uh manifesting you're making something valuable out of chaos, mm -hmm. I, I guess. How do we how do we create some sort of order in, in in a chaotic universe? And art is a very good way to do that. Yes. You know, uh, I was telling Paulette earlier that I, when I was growing up, I I had shifted from the different places in Mexico, being Native American in Mexico. Uh, so you traveled, and you, so the language changes, and the language, uh, the words. Uh, have means and 
what I didn't understand here on the stage, they call me an artist because I, 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 I had ability to illustrate, to draw what I see. So I went off in a search for looking for the meaning of all. Uh, you know, it's the physical meaning of, of, of the word art. And so I, after much consideration, I, I, I thought that art is an ability, and it's an ability that you grow within, that, that you grow with, and, and you try to make it excellent of the ability. Or they call it aesthetics, the aesthetics of, of something. And it's usually the best you can do with what you got, and <laughs> whatever beauty you think it is. Uh, and I thought, God, aren't we all <laughs> trying to see, search for that same yeah. kind of situation? But somehow I, I, I realized that art then encloses a lot more than just me painting or drawing. I, I, I thought that it encloses now engineering, construction, um, the science of everything, biology, and I think it's very inclusive and, and I think as, as human beings we are creators we, we can we have the ability to create whether it be good something for be favorable for the planet or, or unfavorable I think we, we, we make those choices and whatever use of your art form you want to give to the world that it's your decision and and that decision I think through the process that I was telling you earlier becomes a little more clear because I then you realize that you, you, you choose which way you want to go, what, what you want to construct, you want to destroy, you, what, you want to f make someone feel happy or, or you want to make them feel miserable. You know, it's, it's that power that God has and, you know, it's creating a, a gun. It's, it takes ability to draw, to, to, to engineer a, a weapon or should you just not? Art is an expression, a snapshot of the historical now. Right. Whatever we create now, and whatever the expressions of technology, feeling, uh, social change, or, or even weather change, we express it in the art, and we're going to put a footprint on those steps in our future, which is a now, what will we involve for tomorrow. I heard something on the radio the other day about um, a woman who's been teaching kids to uh, to draw, basically, and she takes them out and she lays them on their back, and they look at the clouds and they say, "What's going on in the cloud?" And so she's been doing this for years. And oh, I see horses, I see rainbows, I see you, uh, all, all these things. And she's got. Uh, she came to finally a group recently, who's all on their computers, and they look up at the cloud and they go. There's clouds, I don't see anything. Because imagination is a muscle. Mm -hmm. And so this is something that we have to be cognizant of. We lose imagination, it's, it's not a good thing. And it just seems like it is something that uh, we have to um, be aware of. Thank, thank you, you all so much for being here. And uh, panel, thank you all. Thank you, Mark. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> We've done it. Thank you. So that's fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>